So, Kathy, really looking forward to introducing you this evening as our guest speaker, and I'm going to pop you on as host. And I'm so excited to learn what you're going to be sharing with us about Google. So I'm just going to put you on uh, to make host. So can we put our hands together for Kathy? Over to you, Kathy. Hello there. <laughs> OK, so um, I have uh, talked a few times now about Google AdWords and um, and so I'm kind of preaching to the converted tonight, I'm sure. So I thought uh, I would turn it around a little bit and see how other people can use Google AdWords. So I was just wondering if we could do a little bit of a round robin and see if anybody is using Google AdWords at the moment. Uh, so, Lana? No, not at the moment, no. Oh, is there a particular reason for that? Um, not really. I think some of it is um, on the tech side. I've just got to build an audience. So for me, it's just growing it a little bit organically. And I think once it hits a critical mass, then I can start using Google AdWords to target the right audience. Um, because at the moment, I don't know enough about my avatar to know whether or not I'm hitting the right sort of channel, so to speak, in order to set those ads up. Okay. How about you, Beth? Not at the moment, partly because I have to be so cautious of how I advertise because of the FCA, but also partly because I cover such a wide range of services. At the moment, I'm not sure what one I would probably promote to get the best audience coming in. So I need to do a bit more research really into exactly which of those services I would probably channel people towards. Okay, Cheryl? Well, I know I should be, and I know Lana and I have fiddled around with Google and we've created this account. And so I think we've dabbled, we've almost like dabbled. It's almost like I've been given birth to something, but I've left baby in the corner because I'm. And it's almost something I know I should have done. I've done something with it, then I've abandoned it. Um, and I suppose the most revealing thing for me when I was going through that process was the words that I think I am SEOing against isn't what Google SEOs against. And that's super frustrating because say, for example, you want to sell coaching or mentoring or whatever, it's knowing Google sorts on different words. So you really have to tailor what it is that you're selling in order to get the most out of it. So I think I became frustrated with it and just abandoned it. Mm -hmm. Okay, who else have we got in the room? Karen, you there? I'm here, I'm just not visible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well you probably <laughs> Google added words up, up to your eyeballs, have you? No, no. I, f I found that once I got burnt with Facebook ads, um, because I just do, didn't know enough about them. Um, and then when I was doing Facebook ads, my my reach just decreased because they just wanted me to, to sort of pour more money into them to gain that same reach that I had before. Um, then I just got very uh, cynical about it. And same with Amazon. I won't do Amazon ads because... Um, it's almost like the minute you switch on a switch that says I am willing to pay for adverts, the American website in the background, and it's usually because these are American, goes ka uh, and decides that since you can afford to pay it and you're willing to pay for it, then we'll make it easier for you to spend your money and you don't necessarily get the results for it. So I've just been very cynical about it, um, just based on my experience with Facebook. Yeah, I, I agree. There's there's uh, there's a lot to be cynical about. So um, I'm I'm just going to share my screen and uh, let's have a look if I can get. Okay. Yes. So as as you said, Karen. Yeah, it all kind of started in America, which is why we have to be careful over here in the UK. So it started 21 years ago. Google started uh, considering hyperlinks embedded in text in order to drive traffic to certain 
websites, so you know, big clients that could afford that kind of thing. And as, as they developed that technology, they realized they could develop algorithms, okay, that, uh, that smaller companies could use to em emulate that success and getting, getting referrals. So uh, they developed AdWords and then they set up a whole different um, headquarters, you know, just to sell AdWords. And it's basically very, as you said, very US centric. So we have to be very, very careful. The main thing, if you're thinking about getting into AdWords, and I'm surprised that none of you are, but, um, but if you are thinking about it, I, I just wanted to put very simply out the things that you really do need to be very, very careful of. Um, I've spent a, a lot of wasted money on AdWords. It's very painful to think about. Um, but, uh, and I'll, I'm gonna go through those, those various things now. So let's have a look. So why think about AdWords? It's more important than ever at the moment because especially for people like me in the retail sector, people aren't just willing to pop out for a day out and go, sh go shopping and, and just call in. They, they'd rather do um, a, a search online for your, for, for your whatever it is that you're selling. So you have to really stand out. So when we look back at it, you know, um, page views are up 75% uh, month on month since last year. So we really do have to make a massive impact to stand out. So we need to, I, what I wanted to do tonight, I want everybody to think about, because you've all got reasons for not progressing with using pay-per-click, yeah? And it is scary and I understand why, but if you could work out what would make you kind of unique and stand out and maximize your impact so that you can see the benefit of doing it, that would be, that would be very useful. And it would also um, focus the mind because honestly, you know, as my experience like with Lana would show and many other people, right? It's not my bag, all this stuff. And it's much easier to get someone who really knows what they're doing to do it. And they do it so much quicker and they do it much better. But finding that person that you can trust is, um, is, is, is the key thing. So how do you know how to trust a so-called expert? You need to know what kind of questions to ask them. So as part from all of that, okay, people are going to trust you because of they want to see your online referrals. They want to, they want to see uh, reviews of, the, of other people's experience with you. And that is like a virtuous circle. So they go on, they buy your business, they leave a great review, and then 10 other people may come from that review. So uh, it is really the way to build uh, the online business at the moment. Okay, so, right. Other people will offer you to do amazing stuff on your AdWords, right? But they're not necessarily going to give you the best service. There's lots of huge companies out there. They've got great reviews and they're very, very experienced. And they've got loads of teams and they're taking on people left, right and center to do this kind of work. And they'll make you all sorts of promises, but they won't necessarily deliver. So just for my example, I sell kitchens. And part of what we sell are um, the appliances. And um, I was spending three or four grand a month, you know, last year selling, um, you know, so I had a whole load of keywords that this massive company who promised me the earth was using. And when I went into it, because uh, I had time on lockdown, I was looking at it, it's like, oh my God, there's like washing machine. I'm not in the business of selling washing machines that I have to compete against the likes of Comet. I can't compete in that arena. So why am I, why is my marketing spend being wasted going there, right? Pathetic, waste of time. Probably in one day, my whole 4,000 pounds you know, monthly spent is gone. I mean, something that was never ever gonna, gonna, gonna point uh, potential customers at my website so they can find out who I am. So they will baffle you with jargon. They will make you great promises, right? But you, so this is why it's really, really important before you do go a bit further down this, that you understand what is unique about you that will stand out and maximize impact. And, and that allows you to think more carefully about where you're spending your money. So, 
So there's various ways that, that Google will direct people uh, you know, with your AdWords. So if you have a look over here, if you advertise your specific service, okay, you're going to be pointed, your customers are going to be pointed to things that you, that you are offering, right? But not necessarily your site, okay? Now, and if you spend money uh, using uh, your name, so if I put Kitchen Bureau and I spent money, you know, every time someone clicked on that, it's pointless because people already know the Kitchen Bureau, then th th I don't need to advertise to those people, they know me, okay? I'm not going to spend money watching them click it all away. That's pointless, okay? So really got to think about what's different about you. And in the retail where I am, I'm just a very, very small business in Cardiff. So I have to think about the location. That's what's different about me. I'm local to you, as long as I've organized my spend to just be location specific. That way I've cut out, you know, I, I'm not going to send, sell washing machines to, to someone in Tennessee, pointless. Okay, so this way we get people to come to your site. Right. So there we go. This is it's a very old saying that location, location, location is probably a small business's way of, of using Google AdWords. Well, although a lot of you, like Karen, you're online, so you could you could be anywhere in the world and sell your service. So you have to think about something else. Uh, you know, the, the personal service you give, a fresh view on, on self-publishing. So yes, it's, it's very easy to get views, right? But you want the ones that will drive sales. Uh, so for example, so you've had like crash facilities, South Wales, that's gonna throw up everybody who offers those, okay? But uh, if you want to just point people to your particular village, because if you, if you do crash facilities, obviously it's got a very, very local business. So I want you now to all have, you know, have a think, right? I'm gonna come back to you all. What is very unique about what you offer? Okay, and I'm gonna make you think about this because we have gone over this a few times. So this time I want you to think about it and uh, let's, uh, let's have a chat. So any takers? I'd like to pop, pop mine on the, the board as it were. Um, how do I put over this child development piece as far as helping people understand their business? Okay, so what's important to you is to get people who are interested in child development or are you interested in educating them about child development? Neither. Neither. Okay, well, we're, we're, we are you know, getting it down now. So who is your customer have you got an idea about your customer avatar my customer avatar would be somebody who keeps sabotaging their business or sabotaging their success okay so what kind of words do those people use um failure mm -hmm. um stuck um frustrated um losing money yeah brilliant okay so those are key words that you need to test now to see if they work and see if they're trending okay so um what you do is use if, if you've got a word a wordpress uh website you can use something like yoast or rank math and um, and they will you can put those words in and see if they're trending and see uh, you know how much how much it would cost you to to get those kind of people to to click into um, what you're, you're offering. Lana, can you say anything about rank math? Yeah. So, you know, although when we looked at it before, we were looking at it in terms of um, SEO in blog posts, you, you can use it to look at it for your target audience for your potential adverts. And the same with Yoast and the same with um, the Neil Patel stuff as well. Um, the and, and Kathy's right. If you remember when we talked about SEO ages ago, we were talking about these long tailed keywords, which is basically niche it down and be so specific that it might feel that you've really narrowed the market. 
but they will be the people that actually want to purchase from you because you're specializing it down rather than just being like PC World and Curry's because they're just a bit of everything, you know? So rank math will help you. And, and the easiest way to do it will be set up and create a new blog post. Um, and then you know where all the bits of rank math are underneath the post where you can type in your focus keywords. You can just type in those keywords and see what what ranking number is coming up against them and the higher the number the more likely you're going to get people you know hitting that particular number and the only uh, other thing that I did think of um, Kathy was Google Trends if you go on to Google Trends you can start looking at what is trending what keywords are trending um, so that you can start seeing you know the there we go. Yay. Sorry. It's <laughs> great. Carry on. Going up and down to see where, you know, how popular those words are coming in and out. And, and, and um, you know, like Kathy's done it there, like Cardiff Kitchens, because that's really specific. But I bet if you'd put kitchens, it would have been all over the place, that diagram. And the likelihood would have been if you then try to compare it with a flat lined. So when I first did this, before I kind of knew what I was doing, I put in anxiety coaching. Well, it flatlined and it's like, I don't understand why, because anxiety was supposed to be a keyword and very popular, but I'd actually put the wrong term into Google Trends. So it couldn't pull the data for me. So you do have to fiddle about with your, with your words as well. Before you disappear, Lana, can you tell us what was the technique that we used in order to work out what our competitors keywords were oh we went over to neil patel so um, the best thing you can do is type in your competitors website address in the search bar and then the results will show you the words that they're ranking against so that you've got an idea because if they're ranking against that and you're in the same obviously you're a competitor you're the, they're your competitors you're in the same sphere you need to be targeting yourself to those sorts of keywords as well. I'm going to shut up now. Sorry, Kathy. <laughs> no, no, that's great. That's great. Yeah, but what I'm thinking about with Cheryl is what, what you've brought up is that your a business is always trying to solve a problem. So if you can appeal to that problem, you will find your customer. So uh, Beth, what uh, what problems are you appealing to? Um, well, I want to help people understand their values and their behavior around money so that we can identify their long term goals and their life plans and use tools like cash flow forecasting. I don't want to just meet people and sell them a product. That's not what I want to do. I want to work with people for the long term um, in a far more in-depth way, really. Brilliant. So what kinds of what kind of terms could you think would do you think would uh, would bring up those type of people who have that problem i think we'd steer clear of some of the terms that are obviously used on company sites like ours like wealth management because nobody goes looking for that but if you look for things like life planning cash flow forecasting goal setting i think that's probably more likely to get me the sort of clients i want to work with yeah, you do. You you want the type of people who are thinking positively about their cash. So it wouldn't do you any good to put broke in there because <laughs> that's not that's not the kind of customer you want. Yes. Okay. So coming back to um, have I, have I missed anyone out? I can't see. Let's have a look. Go. <laughs> Karen, Karen, how about you? Oh, my unique bit. I think it's, it's my course where the whole thing I do is aimed at getting a book to leverage a book in your business so that it works for you. Because it's recognising that you're not going to make a huge amount of money from your book, but if you leverage it to take it on and use it as part of your sales funnel, then it will bring customers to you because um, they've got to find you. And it's quite a good one to have um, as a business card going to different events when we can actually do it. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm all about self-publishing and training uh, and teaching you to, or empowering you 
to actually sort of fulfill that. Okay, so what, what kind of problems are you addressing? Uh, for a lot of people, they just don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So the, there's a fear factor as well because they don't know how Amazon works or Lulu or Income Sparks, and they have this dream of it, and they think they have to go through a publisher. But Amazon have made it so easy to actually self-publish a book. Um, once you realise that, then you know, you're on board with it. And what, what what seems to happen with the clients I work with is once they've published one, that they don't stop at one. <laughs> oh yeah, Suzanne. <laughs> it's a book a week. <laughs> uh, yes. So, so really, the problem is that the words might be afraid to self-publish, or something like yeah, finding finding self-publishing too complicated. You don't really want to push out there that it's easy. You don't want to be saying like, oh, you know, Amazon is easy. No, because uh, you'd be out of business. But uh, like I've tried, I've messed about with Amazon. I haven't found it the least bit easy, um, but I love writing. So I'll be a perfect kind of customer. In fact, in fact, when I get around to finishing, <laughs> you'll just be doing it all for me <laughs> because I just want the product as done. Yeah. Yes. So, so it might be interesting for you to, um, to, to have a think about what, what people are afraid of, the, the words they might be using. Because that's what I would be putting in. I'd be like, oh God, uh, Amazon publishing too complicated. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, I'd be putting my problem in there. The other thing to think about is knowing when to spend your money. So you might now have decided, you know, what, what, your, what your words are, but, um, but you have to think about your business. Is it seasonal? So is there any point advertising swimming pools when we're getting into winter? Yeah. Uh, with kitchens, when I look at this, I realize that basically there's no trend at all to timing of when people want to buy kitchens, not recently. There used to be, but things have changed a lot over the last couple of years. Um, so someone, if you're an accountant, okay, most people only want to use your services to get their self-assessments in at the end of January. So it's worth you spending most of your marketing spend on, on pay-per-click in December, I'd say, to get those people, just to remind them and to get them pointing your way. And that's when you're gonna do most of your business. Um, but like, because if you can see the pattern there with, with Cardiff and kitchens, it's all year round. So for me, I just spend the same amount every month and I get relatively the same, the same results. It's quite amazing because you think people are individuals and you're thinking about their psychology and that. And most of life just seems to just come down to numbers you put in a certain amount, you do certain things, and you get out the same results. It's like we're all robots. It's, uh, it's quite scary, really. But anyway, so the next thing you want to think about is how you're spending it. Okay, and this is where thinking about how unique your offering is, is really, really important because it's going to save you a ton of money. So if I just thought, oh, kitchens, Cardiff, yes, that's my location. I'm in Cardiff. I sell kitchens. That's who I am. OK, I would uh, all my marketing money would be gone like in a day, because if you have a look there, it's uh, 10 pounds per click for that. So uh, as I want uh, to be visible online much more during the day to many, many more people, um, I have to think, right, accessible kitchen. I'm really going to go and spend my money on that type of thing. And it's what I do that, that is unique. Um, and the other thing is as well, it's the, it's, it's the product that I do that takes the least amount of time for the most amount of profit. So I'm not going to be a busy fool. And, and I want you all now to think about what you're doing all day. And it's the old Pareto rule, that rule isn't it? You know, you really want to be getting 80% of your revenue from 20% of your customers. And, and, and it's got to be the same with the amount of hard work you're putting in. So it's really, it's really great to take an audit. This, you may never ever get around to doing Google AdWords, right? But if we go through this exercise that we're doing now, uh, it, it helps you know, to reassess your business. So I'm thinking about getting out of property now because I've wasted it. Well, no, it's not waste, obviously, but there's a lot of repetitive work that I'm doing dealing with Airbnb clients and things, you know, and I've got to think about 
uh, what I'm getting out of my life, of my time of life, and all the various businesses I'm doing. What, what do I enjoy? Yeah. And also, I've got, I got grandkids now, so I have to spend time with them. So always it, it pays to have a look at what you're doing, see what you enjoy, see what gets you the most money so that you can enjoy that more, you know, if those two can, you can combine that. Um, anyway, so if you don't do that, it's still an interesting exercise. And, uh, and you always want to stand out from the crowd, whatever you're doing, everybody here today, you, you're here because you're entrepreneurial, because we can't do the nine to five and go and work for somebody. We just can't do it. We want to stand out. We want to do our own offering to the world. Yeah, we're all unique and special. So by just embracing that, make yourself more unique and special and then spend your money just advertising that. So we do accessible kitchens, adaptive, and what comes out of that is wonderful life stories, wonderful ways we've changed the world of certain people that we've been able to help and um, creates great stories as well. And those great stories, create more great stories because people want to read about that. And that's a lot of free advertising and a lot of free referrals going on. So, so if you, even if you don't do this, have a real think about what is unique. You want to, you want to get out of a sea of sameness, right? And, and that's how you're going to find your avatar. By working on yourself more, you will find your perfect customer better and more easily and more cheaply. And it's a virtuous circle. Because the more of them you get in and the cheaper it is to do it, the better work you do. And eventually you start picking, you know, I don't want to do that type of work. I just want to do this. I'm going to cut down that spend. And I'm going to make more money with these people. And uh, that's that's where you, you want to be aiming yourself. OK, right. what else have I said here? So the other thing as well, you know, we thinking about that, OK, our margins are much better when we're dealing with people who want to spend money. So what we decide is to go to go up with luxury kitchens because there's less people in that market. OK, uh, it's, if I could go down and we could get a race to the bottom and compete with all the big boys who were doing it for next to nothing. Uh, and that's, you know, as a small business, we're not going to survive that way. So we decided to go the other way. And so we, we just all our advertising now is focusing on the luxury side of what we do. And we are, you know, working much smarter and, and doing much better. Um, go think about solving your customers' needs. All right. So, for example, we, we could do a brilliant kitchen anywhere in the world, but what's the point? You know, we, we can only really reach South Wales and do it properly. If we're going up and down the M4 to London pointless, all our, all our money will go in hotels and stuff. So there's no point advertising there. So just like, like Lana was saying, niche, 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 niche down. Um, yeah, and make sure as well that the words you do use in your, in your headlines. So when you do Google AdWords, the little advert will come up and you'll see one in a minute and you'll see the headlines. And you've got to make sure that the words in the headlines do actually match your offering um, so that when people then go from, they click on your advert and they go to your website that everything kind of matches. There's not this massive you know, shock. That's so I thought it was this and now it's that, you know, and then they'll just, you know, you've paid for that click and then they'll be disappointed and they'll come off. So be, be very careful about that. And uh, obviously get, get your, your ads approved by Google or, or you know, you'd be spending time and effort on something that's, uh, that's not uh, gonna be out there. And also think about, mobiles most people now are buying stuff online on their on their mobile that they're out and about uh, so make sure that uh, try buying your own stuff from your own phone and then you'll quickly understand how people are seeing your business other things to think about so impressions so when when I first got into business it, I had this idea that was all about I wanted everyone to know the name of whatever business it was um, and then after, after you kind of go bankrupt a few times, you realize, no, you want sales. You really want sales. So you must always test your ads. So this is an example of split testing we've done here. So we've got these two ads. Now this one, uh, you see just, just because of a change of just a couple of words there, you probably wouldn't even notice it unless you know, read it quite carefully. It's the same ad really, just 
described in a different way. This one, for whatever reason, has got, you know, best part of 7,000 impressions, 378 click-throughs. This one has only managed to, to get just under 1,000 impressions of 57 click-throughs. Now, as a design of an advert, and this is why when you're talking to experts who are designers, okay, they're not salespeople of your offering, right? They are designers of adverts, and they kind of think of things in a different way. So they might say to you, oh, this is really successful. You see the click-through right here, 5.83%. Therefore, this, this uh, advert is really successful because people are looking at it and they're clicking on it more than when they look at the other one. But you really have to think about end results. At the end of the day, you want clicks. You want people clicking through, okay? And the great thing about this advert is for whatever reason, 7,000, uh, so seven times more people have seen your name even if they don't want a kitchen at the moment, right? They may think, you know, subliminally, oh, right, yeah, there's that kitchen place in Penarth, whatever it was, the big orange one. They don't know how, they don't know why, but that's what's great in impressions do. And we got 378 click-throughs. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about our funnel in a minute. So we want to get these people into your funnel. So this, uh, although, you know, you, you could, someone who was quite analytical could say it's not as successful, this is the kind of advert you want, it's much more successful. Okay. So in order to keep finding adverts that are successful, um, we run 257 different adverts and we're always testing the different keywords. Now, when I say we, obviously it's not me and it's not my company, right? I just put it into to an agent. So that's obviously the best way to do it because they do it all day long. That's the best way. But what I'm saying is you've got to guide them and you've also all, always got to check because what happens is they tend to send out reports and then you won't bother looking at the reports because it's all gobbledygook. So what you do is you, when they get a report, just give them a ring, say, right, what does this mean? Can we talk about these various things, please? And get them to explain what they're doing and ask questions. Because you know, if I'd have done that before, I wouldn't have wasted all thousands and thousands of pounds on bloody washing machines. I'd have said, why are you doing that? That's an idiot, idiotic idea. You should be talking about, you know, cupboards that come off the walls and help people in wheelchairs. You know, why is a wheelchair in there? That kind of thing. Okay. So we test, uh, we test the adverts, test the keywords, we make sure that we're not, um, hang on, <laughs> come off there. <laughs> make sure that there's no leakage. So um, the other thing I found out with this new company, that the other company was advertising me as far as, as, as Reading. Well, it's pointless. I can't, I'm not going to send a, a a microwave to someone reading is pointless, so wastage. So always be checking that. We do retargeting. So if somebody's come onto our website, so they might have clicked on and then thought, oh, I don't know, and then they've clicked off to, to go and see someone else. Um, our, our kind of advert will chase them around the internet. So every, every time they're looking at something, it could be something totally unrelated, something else they're doing, you know, reading something, whatever, it'll just come up underneath. So just to remind them that, uh, that they were looking at us and hopefully they're gonna click back on. And, uh, and make sure you've got conversion tracking. So you're always you know, checking that what you think is happening is what's really happening and that your money is being well spent. So just to recap on that. So um, do you have an idea of your, as you said, customer avatar, right? Have you got out to them that, that you are unique and you are the only answer to their problem? And if there are other people with similar offerings, what are you doing that's different, more personable, cheaper, whatever it is, you've got to just tweak it so that uh, you're better than your competition. Um, and that you make sure that you're not driving traffic to your rivals, okay? So, right. How do we do this? We talked about rank math. Thanks. Thank you, Lana and Yoast. Um, and the other thing that you can use as well, which is free, is, uh, is, uh, is this adsgoogle.com. So you can set up a Google AdWords account, okay? So you can do all of this yourself. You go through and you pretend you're going to spend £10 a day and just get, get work through all the analytics there and then just put your campaign on, on, uh, on pause. OK, so you don't actually have to do it, but you have learned quite a lot about what's trending in your business and what are good keywords. 
Okay. So other thing you can think about is, uh, is add extensions. So when you get a bit more sophisticated, you can, you can put things up there like, oh, we do free delivery or whatever. But you're always trying to stand out and your, what we've learned through lockdown is that you have to be flexible and offer something, you know, that uh, you've got to interact more with your customers. Okay. So we all, you know, we all loved people during lockdown that would uh, to deliver to us or, or we're having a pop-up locally so we could go and try stuff out, you know, not travel too far, that kind of thing. So whatever it is that you're, you know, that you're doing this different at the moment to your competition, it's worth spending a bit of just putting that ad extension out there. Um, the other thing I was going to do, I was going to show you our funnel. Let's have a look. Uh, right. <laughs> oh no, I can't get this thing off my... Uh, Oh, hang on. You might need to come off screen share and then yeah, go back. I'll just stop share a minute, just a sec. Right. I'm just going to go and shout at my dog. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> Okay, can you see that now? Yeah. So this is this is what we're using at the moment. It's our, our lead center. So this is the value of um, being able to analyze everything you're doing. So you're not telling yourself any like lies. So um, in the last, uh, we, so we set this up a couple of months ago. So we've had 321 uh, inquiries. So what we did, we did a Facebook campaign um, about, uh, so the kitchens. And uh, from that particular um, campaign, uh, we've had this much money in so far. Okay, so there's 20 grand there, but that's, that's only from this campaign. It's not from the whole business. It's, this is campaign specific. So what we know from here, uh, this, is our, this is our particular funnel. So we've had 321 brochures requested. And from that, Okay, uh, we've got our next part of our funnel, the green bit is the hot leads. So hot lead is people that we're engaged with. So we're having a conversation with them. So what we do is we send them a text and we send them emails uh, because we know that they've looked at our website. We send them emails like, hello, we saw you looking at our website. Anything we can help you with? Anything in particular you're looking at at the moment? That kind of thing. So we've got all, all kinds of different messages we're sending them. And, um, when they move from here then on in our funnel, they move into, um, some of them are not ready yet, okay? So we move them into our recall. So there's still more list that, you know, maybe a month, two months down the line when they're ready to move or for whatever reason, they're gonna have the money to spend on the kitchen. And then we've got another part of the funnel is, um, is the appointments. Uh, so we know uh, 71 people have requested appointments. So they're gonna come into the showroom um, or, or we're going out to measure. Um, and then we can tell from here. Yeah, so measures booked, some of them are waiting quotes, and some of them have been quoted. So you see that the numbers here are getting smaller all the way down to there we go. So we've got five kitchens out of this campaign so far. So because that's the funnel, the top number is all of them, and then and then they're gradually moving down. So over here, which is more, more useful, you can see, so uh, here we go. So at the moment, most of them, so we've got 198 people that we're talking to. And yeah, so this is broken down. So this pie chart shows uh, where, where most the activity is going on at the moment. And that, that's where you, you would expect it to be. So you're trying to get all the people in green to, um, to, uh, to you're trying to get them to make an appointment or to request uh, a, a measure. And you're trying to get them along to the next bit of the funnel. So when I come down here, so um, we assign certain tasks to different people. So I, I don't get involved in this, so I haven't got any uh, tasks to me there. Um, but what's interesting is 
the lead sources so we can see where different leads have come in. So this brochure sign up campaign, that's, 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 our most, that, that's the best one we've done. So this Facebook campaign is the, is the best thing. So we've got 273 in there, which has produced 10,000 pounds worth of income. Um, so we've got a chat widget, which is interesting. So it's like a bot that just talks to people on, on, on the website. Um, and yeah, so these are various places that people have come in. Um, yeah, so as you can see, uh, publications, that's an advert, you know, so that's a, that's a quite good as well, you know, although they're, they're very expensive. So then you have to think about the cost of putting an advert in a publication that someone will see once or a campaign on Facebook that's going night and day. Anyway, so these are Google ads here. So I can see um, exactly what I'm spending now. So 383 is every time someone clicks on one of our ads, um, how many impressions it's created and, and my spend so far. So uh, the other thing now, Google My Business, that's, um, not doing that, not doing anything. So obviously now I'm going to have to go back to Google and say, what's happening with Google My Business? Is there any way we can get that working a bit better? There you go. So that's a little little snapshot of things that's happening in my business. Okay. So any more ideas about people thinking about what problems uh, are they trying to solve? And um, oh, my off video now. There we go. Hello, do you you're see back. Me? Yes, we can see you. <laughs> I'm worried now that none of that, none of that was screen shared. <laughs> it was. It was. That's good. Okay. Yes. So, thinking about our customer avatars, thinking about what problems we're solving. And, uh, and what is unique about us so that we stand out from the competition. So I'm hoping that's got the old gray matter thinking a little bit more niche, niche, niche. Mm. Could we give Kathy a round of applause? That was an amazing presentation. Thank you, Kathy. That was really, really good. Can we take questions from people if people have any questions? Could I ask a question then about your Facebook advert? Um, how much did you spend for that amount of business to flow your way via Facebook? What was the cost of the campaign? Uh, well, the first the first uh, month was fifty six quid. Then it was one hundred and twenty five quid, and then we ramped it up to four hundred quid. Right. So, did you feel you got the return on that that you were expecting? And yeah, much better. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Very good return. Yeah. You've also got to add in the costs of the people who are managing it for you. So our, our, um, our company costs us 600 pounds a month and the lead center um, app there that's working all that, uh, that's, that's also that's 450 pounds a month. So you've got that platform, but that's a platform that I need for the business, all the designers on the same page. And I can go into any of those customers and look at the conversations they're having. Um, so I can I can say to, to my showroom manager, oh right, you've missed somebody, you know, made an inquiry today. You know, have you engaged there? But you know, not that I have to, but um, I can go in and see exactly what all the designers are saying at any time to any of our customers. So there's quite a lot to that. It's definitely worth it. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like basically having a till. It's brilliant. Excellent. Sorry, Beth, I cut across you there. <laughs> Kathy, obviously I've been to your showroom because you've done my kitchen and you do other rooms. Do you ever advertise the other rooms or have you found that you just go with the kitchens? Yeah, we've tried the other rooms and in the end, kitchens are the best. Yeah. So when you, when you think about you want to, you know, you've got a limited uh, budget and your, your name you know, when you went into it, you called it the kitchen bureau. <laughs> you have to just make the most of that. Wonderful. Lana, do you have any questions? I can see you yeah, scribbling a lot. I, that was just amazing because actually what it has done for me is like reignited a bit of interest and thinking, ooh. Um, and I think um, what, what was really helpful to see is just how much detail you've got now 
with your whole funnel process so you can see where things might break down and also you can get there really quickly to you know relook at how to do it but I was going to ask you about the um, AB split testing so do they do that or do they just tell you you need these two different landing pages and we're going to just do it every six people or do they work all that out for you or do you have to sort of tell them what you want they do all that cool. yeah thank god <laughs> well, that's what i was thinking. you need a life <laughs> yeah well that's what i was thinking because from from you know if i'm thinking about you know how would i do that for myself then all of a sudden it's like oh god that's that's two landing pages and then i've got to figure out you know myself how to do it and then the question then becomes is it actually beneficial to look at getting somebody to do it for you at that point rather than trying to fiddle with trying to do it for yourself yeah when you get to a certain point in your business you really do have to just outsource all these things um, and another question how did you get to choose that particular um sales um agency what was they, it about them that got you to them well they did they did a facebook ad <laughs> and during lockdown I was messing around and um yeah and obviously looked at lots of different things but you know what they they pursued me like the hounds of hell and i thought to myself oh wow they pursued me on every, every little bit you know so it's like well if they do that to customers they, that, that's the kind of person you want somebody pursues you like that so like we had, we had a few conversations and um we shredded the price a bit and uh, and then we got to where we needed to be excellent so karen do you have any questions is karen there no 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 i'm just bamboozled and brain sort of <laughs> i think for me because um my business is so much smaller still i just don't have that money coming in at the moment and i say at the moment um to sort of do that whereas hopefully in the future then i can actually do that and then grow the business as well um but i've got yeah i think it's it's, it's a bit early for me and i don't have such expensive products that i can get that return and plus I, i'm i'm sort of all over the place now i'm sort of trying to get more into uh the us which is what the bc stack will help me do so um yeah different 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 horses for courses so. yeah yeah and it's good to recognize that isn't it really so how is everyone going to put this into practice so i'd like to know from you first of all kathy where are you going with your google keyword advertising what's your future strategy for it well um it's to just put more money into it we're getting a thousand percent return so the more money i put in the better return we get the only thing is at the moment i have to temper that you know idea of numbers with the reality of it being a physical location and the current lockdown issues so um at the moment thinking about you know it would be so so easy for me to say oh we'll just put twice as much in now and get twice as much revenue in but i've got to think are we going to get locked down again? You know, be very, very careful about how I spend my money. So it's not always just about maths. Okay. How can we keep you accountable on you achieving your goals connected with this? Just ask me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you've told me what you're not doing, but what are you, what are you going to be doing? Because you said, you know, you can't do what you would like to do. So... What, what are the, some of the goals that you have now as far as growing this winning streak? Um, I'm, well, just looking at other, other ways of uh, putting the story out there. So, so we, we talked a lot in the past, have we, about, about the, the, the story of the Bureau, how it came to be, and, um, and getting that story out on many different platforms. Because if we are locked down, I mean, that's it's it's story that sells on Facebook and you know other lines yeah so like medium, local, various platforms where people want to read interesting stories. So, but uh, no, um, 
having tried all every type of advertising, you know, from radio to, to um, glossy magazines and that, this has been for us the most successful. So Facebook and um, Google AdWords, that, that's what works for us. So I'm always going to be doing that for this particular business. So do you do Twitter or Instagram or any of the other platforms? Um, well, I've heard that Instagram is great because, um, because we have a very um, a, a beautiful product that photographs well. But uh, I, I need more time to have a look at that. OK, so your focus is just Google keyword advertising and Facebook. That's right. That's yeah. your strategy. It's really good, isn't it, when somebody can say, no, that's what I'm doing, as opposed to, you know, doing so many. Oh, lovely. Thank you, Kathy. So, Beth, what are you going to do to put this into practice? Is there anything here that you feel you can put to work? I've got to figure out what I would focus on rather than keeping it broad. Like Kathy says, she just does the kitchen. She does far more than kitchens, but kitchens is what gets them in through the door and then they see everything else. So I've got to figure out which of those threads I would uh, choose to focus on for clients. Would it be responsible investing? Would it be cash flow forecasting? Is it pensions? What's the actual thing that would make me stand out? Lovely. Thank you, Beth. And over to you, Lana, what, what, are you, what have you learned that you're going to put into practice? Well, I think I need to really nail my avatar on the tech business now. Um, and so, so I might come to you, Kathy, and have a chat uh, um, on that side. And also then to start looking at what will be those specific keywords. What is it that I'm doing that's unique to somebody else that's you know, doing website stuff and tech stuff? Um, so I need to really sit down and think through that first and make that the first step. Okay, you could, you could tell the story of this mad, mad woman with, with stripes in her hair who couldn't put a website together to save her life. And you did it for her and it turned her life around and she started selling books worldwide. Yeah, and look how, look how much traffic you've had from it. And it's only been up, what, three weeks? Yeah, yeah, it's been phenomenal, phenomenal, Midway. yes. Yeah, but it's testament to you. You worked hard on getting that all linked up and together. It's looking brilliant. Thank you. Well done. Well, perhaps you can show us next week, Kathy. We'd love to see that next week, yeah? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so over to Karen. Karen, what have you learned this evening that you might put into practice? I think for me, I, I just need to get down, uh, as, as Lana was saying, about my customer avatar. Um, <laughs> because I'm going to have two versions of, of mass self-publishing, one that's cheaper than the other, and make sure people are directed to, to, to which one suits them. So it may be about doing a quiz, and I've just been on their website as well at the same time, because I can multitask. I'm female. Um, <laughs> so I think for me, it's, um, it's not necessarily a road I'm going to go down, but it's going to help me understand my customer and how I can serve them better. Mm, lovely. So I, I think I do the same as Karen and Lana. It's all about understanding his avatar and ta knowing what words are flushing through in their mind and then developing a campaign around that. So I'd just like to thank you, Kathy. You were absolutely amazing this evening. Could we give Kathy another round of applause? Well done, Kathy. You were amazing. And um, I love pop the uh, recording out on YouTube for us all to be able to watch it again. And uh, next week, Lana is going to be teaching us about how we organize our social media stuff. So Lana, can you give us a little advert uh, with regards to what next week is all about? Yeah, this is a, this is a lesson in how to do it and don't do as I do, just do as I say. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, we're looking at we're look, we're, is, I mean it's we're around scheduling obviously and looking at different uh, tools that you can use to kind of organize and, and make your social media um, more cohesive to enable you to move people through your funnels and your adverts. Lovely. Well, look forward to that and look forward to seeing everyone same time, same place next week and enjoy the rest of the evening, everyone. Good night. Good night.